Hello guys, welcome to a request hammer watch tutorial. Um, this one's going to be covering teleportation, level changing, and AI movement after you've spawned them. Uh, let's. I'm going to do a quick run through and show you what I mean. Okay, so now on this top left, I'm going to have AI spawning in, and after they spawn in, they immediately start moving with pathing, and they're going to walk all the way across to this fire trap on the right, which will kill them, and then. There you go. After that, I'm going to show you how to switch levels, which when I step on this platform down here, it's going to take me to my topmost level. And if I walk back to the staircase, it'll take me back down to the same level. You can take note that the pathing scripts do not save, and so or the pathing doesn't save, and so these guys have stopped moving that were previously on the map before I switched. And if I go back up, I can walk down different staircases and make it to different levels, which here's one. And I can walk back up to the top. And then this one's going to take me to a different location within the same level. And that's what we're going to have to do for teleportation, which I, I can exhibit right here. When I step on this platform on the right, it's going to teleport me to the platform on the left. So I can just keep walking back and forth throughout here. And basically what you're doing is you're taking yourself to another level. And immediately after you reach that level, you're taking yourself back to this previous level in a new location. So uh, other than that, there's really no way to teleport that I can find, um, but that's going to work for us, and I'll get to how to do this all. Okay, so first with the AI script, the only thing that is tricky here is you're going to take your move AI, and unlike selecting normal units, which you click on actors and then you would select those actors, we're going to select the actual script that creates the actors, only the only thing different that we need to do here is you need to right click and this little pull down bar will pop up that says last spawned and you want to select that and make sure that you trigger this move AI before you spawn more units because it will only move the units that were last spawned from that um, creation and so I have a um, timer trigger here that immediately after it spawns these units it um, orders them to move to the new location so actually the, these um, spawn objects are strictly or specifically um, triggering this move AI so when this spawns it triggers the move AI right afterwards and so they move right after they're spawned and there's a time delay uh, this move AI starts this move AI and this move AI also starts this move AI but it's at different time intervals which you can pull down this little pull bar and you can see the scripts that it's currently located or connected with and if I click on spawn object I can see I have a delay of 1000 which is about one one second and then I click on my other spawn object and it's a delay of 500 which is about half a second and so this fires waits half a second fires that one fires that one and that's all I have set up there otherwise they move over here or this is the pathing node that I have selected that they move to Oops, I gotta change my grid size and then um, the thing that I have them running into is a fire trap which is under prefabs and it turns out prefabs are just pre-made objects with triggers attached to them. So I just place down this prefab and it automatically opens up, spews out flame, and damages anybody who walks inside of it, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to try to figure out how to make prefabs so you can have a bunch of shortcuts and so you don't have to cre keep remaking the same traps. Um, that's just to show you if I needed to. I have a parallax layer, which isn't really part of the tutorial, but I'll show you really quick. You can add a, um, if you want water in your background, which I have water in the background of this one, this parallax layer is um, its sprite is tile maps water and I've added that on layer negative 101 because the ground itself is on layer negative 100 and so if you put anything behind layer negative 100 it will spawn behind the ground and I put water in there and so it basically fills the entire map with water except for anything that I put on the map so if you want your entire map to have a water based theme you can throw a parallax layer instead of actually placing down the water tile map yourself because you can place it down like this Oops. okay let's get into the level changing this thing's kind of difficult because what you need to do is you need to actually make um, a level file and put all your levels together and this is what you're going to be doing when you're um, packaging your uh, your map together so you can distribute it to the public now for the level 
switching, we're going to look at a level exit script. And you, what you want to do is you want to say what, what the new level is. And I'll show you where to designate <coughs> what the new levels are going to be called. This new level is called 0, which is my topmost level. I have five levels, I think. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the name of your level is going to be your level ID. And I'll show you how to change that um, in a sec. Um, this is just a basic rectangle shape attached to an area trigger. So when I walk on that rectangle, it's going to trigger my level exit, which will take me to a new level. And the level start, you can have multiple level starts on your map, which I have two on this map, one right here and one right here. This level start ID is zero, and this level start ID is one. And so when I send someone to this map, I can tell them to either go to um, level start zero or one and it will start me at one of these two locations. If I designate a level start of a number that doesn't exist yet, it will send you to the first level start, or the level start ID, I think, zero, as a default. And let's go to my other level. So I first take my character to my top floor, which has all my um, staircases for the individual dungeons, and also is my teleportation script. Um, so he spawns at level ID 2, which right here is my level start, and you can see its start ID is 2. This level start ID is 1, this level start ID is 3. So whenever I'm coming up each of these staircases, I designate which start ID I want them to sp spawn in front of, so you know which staircase you've come out of. And that's kind of useful, just so your character isn't confused where he just came from and spawns randomly on the map. Okay, so... Yeah... Okay, let's get into the meat of uh, putting your file together. So your map is going to be saved somewhere on your computer. You're going to have to find that map location, and you're going to move your map file to a map folder, which contains a bunch of different resources and information about your map. Now, by default, you're going to... Let me go to my hard drive. You're going to be looking under Program Files. This is for the Windows version. I'm not sure how the Mac version is set up, but Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Hammerwatch, and then Editor. And inside of this editor, you need to make a file which is going to house the location of all your files for your map. Mine's called Dungeon Escape. If I go to this file that I've created, inside of here I have a couple different folders and a couple different... Um, I guess you'd say text files. These folders need to be here, and these text files need to be here for all this to work. This this part's kind of complicated, and there's a couple informational things like up on the wiki page and stuff like that of what exact exactly the contents are that you need to have in this folder. Make sure you have well, you don't exactly have to have an actors or a doodads folder, but you do need to have a levels folder but it's safe to put them all in there just by default. You don't have to have anything in them, just have them there. Um, now if we go to our levels folder, I have all five of my levels. Uh, AI tutorial, bridge tutorial, dungeon escape one, teleport, top floor. Now this is where you need to put your, um, your map along with any other maps that you want to be associated with this one. So if you want to jump between two maps, they both have to be within this folder. Now you need to have a level script which is in here I would suggest using notepad that's what I'm using to open this up and edit it and these usually come def this, these used to come default with the hammer watch but for some reason in the new update it's they removed the folder that had all these in there and so if you look inside of here it's gonna have some scripts that are gonna be kind of unfamiliar to you but it's basically just copy and paste you need to find these files online um, I would suggest Hammerwatch Wiki. I can send you a link that'll have exactly what you need to have inside of this um, notepad. But basically, you're gonna have you're gonna designate your levels, um, where you're gonna start. Which start it's equal to one, and so it starts you at the first um, level start uh, script that you have placed down inside of your level. And then in between this and the closing of level script, you need to put all your levels. And you can have multiple acts. Here we're just going to have one act. Um, and in between this and the closing of your acts, you need to put all of your levels. Now, these are all five or five of my levels. I have zero and then through four. 
level ID, this number you can change, and this is going to be the name of your level or how you're going to designate what level you're going to. I have 0 through 4, so when I was changing my levels, I said go to level 0, and then at start location, I designated which, um, which script I was looking at, or which level start script I wanted my character to spawn on top of. So your level ID is the, basically the name of your map that you're going to reference within your editor. Now, if we look at over here, we have levels slash this is the name of your level. After levels slash, you're going to put in exactly the name of your level so it can find your level. What it's basically doing is looking at the levels um, at the levels folder within inside of your inside of here, the the main folder that you made. It's going to look at this folder and then it has a slash of what file to look at within that folder. So top floor dot XML is the, the XML is the file type of your map and you need to have exactly the name of your map here. And so this is saying that look inside the levels folder, find this map, and designate its ID as zero. Everything else here should just be copy and paste. Um, I don't quite know if this is like where you start in the floor or what, but all you're interested in is, I guess I could put these to two. All you're interested in is changing this as the name of your map and then designating its ID. So your editor, knows which map to jump to. And then I made sure to make one for made one for every single one. So top floor, dungeon escape, AI tutorial, bridge tutorial, teleport. And the teleport map is the one I'm using to specifically teleport. It's a completely blank map, I'll show you. Except for the few scripts that I need to teleport with. So when my character is taken to this floor, he starts right here but I have a global event trigger that when this level is loaded, so as soon as my character spawns into this level, he exits the, he exits the level. It um, activates my trigger exit level and it takes me right back to the same level I was on, which is level zero. And it's level start location is my fourth level start. So if I go back to my top floor, over here on the left, you can see my level start and its start ID is four. So on the right, area trigger, which your level exit area, oh, I guess you don't need a area trigger. <laughs> I somehow did it without it. So you can just make a level exit, connect it to the shape, and it'll automatically assume it's a area trigger. So when I enter this shape, I level exit to my teleport level, which is level ID of four. You can see that here, teleport level ID of four. And so it's going to that level, and once it gets there, immediately after the level's loaded, it takes me back to this level in a new location, which is here. Yes, I think that is it. Um, I, I really hope I explained this well. It's I kind of went through it quick, and I didn't exactly prepare super well for this tutorial. So if you guys want me to remake it, or if anything's confusing, feel free to ask any questions. And that's it for the request. See you later.